Okay, today we're going to be talking about fixed asset cycle auditing. You know, at different companies, they have different names for it a lot of times, but in general, it's just the property, plant, and equipment. could be called the capital assets, and it also will include things like intangible assets. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. In essence, the long-lived assets, assets that will last you longer than a year. So the major accounts are equipment, and again, this is just one account listed here because you can have land and buildings and machinery. You could have infrastructure, construction in progress, capital improvements, capital leases. All these are things that could be in the uh, fixed asset account cycle, which will usually, except for land, have an accumulated depreciation associated with it. It's going to be based on the depreciation expense that you calculate every year. There can be gains and losses on the disposal of assets. They could be retired, they could be sold, and you could also have impairment losses where the asset itself loses significant value. Some of the inherent risks with fixed assets, well, Obviously, there could be some estimates in there, estimated life, estimated salvage value. So if those are in some ways altered, that could be an inherent risk. The asset impairment, it might lose that functional value that you bought it for. You have losses that could occur through the disposal of those assets. You have natural resource concerns, like, for example, you might have a fixed asset that all of a sudden becomes subject to some natural resource problem or environmental problem and then intangible assets that enhance your business they uh, have some usually have some estimated value on it whether it's a patent or it's goodwill on a business that you're buying and you could have loss of business value if there's an impairment on those intangible assets for example that acquisition that you have and brought in does not have the value you thought it did and so you might wind up having to uh, have an impairment on the goodwill that you established. On the fraud side of things, I mean, obviously, unlike inventory, someone can't usually pick up your building and take it with them and unnoticed, but there are ways that you could potentially have financial statement fraud related to fixed assets, like you might overvalue that existing asset and it's not really worth what you say it is. That could be defrauding uh, creditors that are giving you loans related to the value of that particular fixed asset. It could also be inflating the value of your company uh, for investors. You could record fictitious assets, fic assets that don't really exist. So a lot of times to fraudsters, the individual fraudster, when you talk about misappropriation of assets, might steal cash or something, and that's a credit. So that fraudster is looking for a place to hide the debit side of that transaction. And fixed assets has been a good place for that because people aren't always looking at the fixed asset value like they are at inventory and other things. So you get the credit of the cash being stolen and you book it to a fixed asset, so that's your debit. So it's a fictitious asset, an inflated asset cost. Capitalizing expenses is what a management might want to do if they want to have their profits look better. So let's say you've got a business unit that has management goals in which they're expecting to uh, exceed the profit levels so that they'll get some sort of bonus they may decide to capitalize expenses that really should not be, and that will inflate their profits. They could also fail to remove assets from the books after a sale of the asset. So not recording that sale would leave it on there and inflate the assets, but they could also sell it and pocket the proceeds from that. One of the areas you wanna be careful of is if you're in a large multinational company, there could be subsidiaries or geographical units that might use the purchasing power of the major entity to, let's say, buy automobiles or something that seem like company cars. When you get there, you might find out that the local management is buying those cars and then selling those cars, but leaving them on their assets side of 
things. So as an auditor, you want to just verify those fixed assets that they may be uh, acquiring. Uh, they could also inappropriately assign large residual values to that so that it'll depreciate less. So if it depreciates less, that means it's gonna, less is going to be on the uh, income statement and they're going to look more profitable. So they'll inflate the profits by having an unrealistically high residual value. And there could also be miscalculations in depreciation or amortization. Sometimes this isn't you know, an intention of fraud. Sometimes this is just the Excel spreadsheet doesn't add things up properly. And sometimes you can have so many items on your Excel spreadsheet that you might miss a calculation error. You know, you could take depreciation, for example, across a 10 year life. Well, if you're not careful, maybe the person has taken that same depreciation off across a 20 year life and accidentally recorded uh, depreciation that on assets that over depreciates them. And ultimately that's going to reduce net income and potentially save taxes. So that's another area that you have to make sure is the calculations of depreciation and amortization are being done properly.